All right, all right. It's your coach, Tim. Today, I want to talk about success and what is limiting you from finding it. I want to start off with a bit of a story. So earlier this year, family's traveling, we're on vacation. We get into this resort, get our room all booked up. We're in, tired for the day. Baby's down to bed. She's maybe four months old or so at this time. And we decide, hey, let's just put something on the TV, chill out, relax. No harm in that, right? So we queue up, uh, I think it was, must have been Disney Plus because what came on was Aladdin. I'd never seen Aladdin before, right? And this is supposed to be a classic from the 90s. I should have grown up with this, but I didn't. So we hit play and there's this warning that comes on. Instantly, I'm like, whoa, wait, what? What's going on here? I thought this was supposed to be like a kid's show. And so we'll watch a little bit more and then maybe about half an hour, maybe 40 minutes in, my daughter wakes up and all of a sudden she's just glued, glued to this screen. And I'm looking at it, I'm like, oh, no, 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 this is not cool. Like, I didn't even want to continue watching. We actually stopped it, paused it there and went to try to get her back down to sleep. But that, it pointed out two things to me. For one, be careful what you expose your kids to when it comes to screens. And then for two, why should a four-month-old, why, why should anyone that age be exposed to something like that in the first place? And I sat down recently with a pediatrician, and you know what they actually t told me is that it's not even recommended for kids under the age of six years old to have any screen time. When I know six-year-olds who have TikTok, Instagram accounts, anyhow, this, this story I'm telling you, this solidified in me the desire to become a no-screen family. We we're in the process of moving, I was able to sell our TVs, that was an easy one. The hard one, phones. So... And this is really what I want to talk about, because I really honestly believe that this is one of the most limiting factors we have to success, is our phones. What we're holding in our hands, staring at as we walk, always in our pocket, this phone, the mobile phone, the cell phone, whatever new name you want to call it in this tech world, this phone is probably going to kill you. So my wife and I, we sat down and we kind of worked on developing a plan. And the first thing was we wanted to basically limit how we we're utilizing our phones in our own home. So we immediately decided, okay, no phones, bedroom, off limits. Phone does not enter the bedroom. Number two, bathrooms. Phones do not go in the bathrooms. And I mean, as a Muslim, when you're walking around, you've probably got a Quran app, a Salah app, things like that on your phones, maybe some dhikr or du'as. These are things you should keep out of the bathroom anyway in, in our culture and tradition. So it, it's, it's got spiritual benefits to it to eliminate that. So great steps there. We're, we're working on things and heading to good progress. The, the third thing that we wanted was no phones at mealtimes. Eliminate that. All great kind of health benefits. We're drawing together the family better, more community in, in the home, uh, and yeah, on the right track. Easier said than done. So we instantly noticed, oh, whoops, we're breaking these rules. It's not happening. Sometimes we're good at it. Sometimes we're not. So the next thing, look, imagine your phone. This phone is something that we are now so accustomed to having on our bodies. It, it's literally like become an extension of us, right? Think back. It, it, it's this whole mindset thing, right? Think back to Aladdin's the 90s, right? Think back to the 90s. Phones were tied into the wall. Okay? We had a corded phone. I, I grew up that way. My parents definitely grew up that way. Now, unfortunately, these days, younger generations, like 
my daughter for one is not going to have that in her consciousness to think about it this way so i think and this is what my wife and i decided we said like okay we're going to treat the phone as if it was corded to the wall when you get in from being outside a phone's a great thing to have, I think I have when you're out and about oh, yeah right that's the whole point of it being mobile but when you're at home all right we got a sh- shelf right by our door what is it mostly for your keys maybe your wallet's gonna go buy it your phone that's the other thing that you always walk out the door with right keys wallet phone um maybe sunglasses a hat something like that but yeah phone's one of those things you're always going to have on you when you exit your house so when you get in put it with those things and leave it there you don't need to be walking around with it all the time when you actually need it for something great all right just go grab it and put it right back done right It, it was a better step i'll say that ultimately what i ended up deciding to do was just eliminating the phone situation pretty much altogether i got a new phone i I gotta show it to you guys okay so this here this is old phone bye bye this right here this is new phone look at these completely different i mean screens (laughs) this little thing is just it's it's a joke almost in a way but seriously it works like crazy so When I'm at work during the week, I use the real thing, right? I take that with me, do what I need to do when I'm out and about. As soon as I'm done for the week at work, smack into this guy, goes my SIM card. And if this thing is powered up more than about two hours at once, if I'm just fiddling around on it, doing whatever, battery's dead. I mean, there you go. (laughs) There goes the phone for you. It, it, it was the perfect thing. Switching to a dumb phone will save your life. Fixing the device itself, changing up how you interact with the phone, making it so that the phone won't do what we're, in a way, addicted to get out of it, right? And, and that's the point. Like, What are we getting out of it? Are we treating it as a tool or are we treating it as a toy? Is it consuming from us more energy and and data right maybe whole privacy things people talk about that all the time is that happening or are we actually utilizing the phone to run a business i mean i to be perfectly honest that was the original reason i got a phone was it what i've been doing with it most of this time no it wasn't the phone was taking more out of me it was sapping and just zapping that energy completely out of me this whole thing, it, it took some time to develop. I did it in some stages. It's not an over-the-night thing. The whole process. But from the beginning to the end, I mean, just just look at some of these benefits. I was doing 12 to 14 hours um, per day as a weekly average for screen use time on my phone. After this switch, I am now down to 6 to 7 most of that is using my calculator at work (laughs) so i actually just got myself a calculator a real calculator so i'm not using that i'm it i haven't run the numbers yet on this new average but it's probably going to cut in half from that probably i'm going to guess uh between three to five hours per week uh, for per day average social media usage this used to be about two hours daily i'm down to 20 minutes or less per week you are saving so much time and with that time you're gaining back so much energy to put out into other areas of your life like my family it's been amazing what we've been able to do this year we've been able to go on some amazing vacations and just get intense joy and pleasure and just bonding time out of it so it's these steps i'm sharing with you these are great if you want to try to implement them yourself or the same goal or another goal i mean every type of thing is going to be similar in a way it takes roughly about 21 days to establish a habit give yourself more than three weeks i I would say four to six is probably better because you should expect failure expect some setbacks you're not going to be perfect at it your first time 
probably even your second or third time. And these failures are good for us. This is how we evolve and become better people by learning, oh, nope, this didn't work. Um, nope, I have a, kind of a subconscious thing going on here. I need to, need to work in this area, okay? You're going to find these in any habit breaking or habit making experiment that you do with yourself. And once you started to actually go through with trying to form a new habit, you're going to find all of this extra time and energy and creativity just welling up on you and you're going to have to find a new outlet. This often happens when you eliminate one thing, you're going to have to substitute it with another. And often that's our goal, right? We wanted to substitute something else. <laughs> we wanted to have more time for our family. We wanted to be able to pass on good habits to our children, things like that. And one thing I would encourage for everyone, take, take a look at your phone bill. If your phone isn't making for you as much money as you pay to have it and use it, then there's something wrong with that picture. Look, it it's a psychological switch that's going to happen at some point or another with, with your phone or, or with something else in your life. I, mean, I can go on and talk about... Uh, other other smart devices and things like that. Like I did a whole thing with, um, honestly, productivity at work just by switching from using a smartwatch to going back to an analog watch. My point is, there is a difference between mediocrity and abundance simply in how you are viewing the tool, and in this case, the phone that you have. And that switch, that, that switch happens in the mind. Inshallah, you have uh, maybe thought about it or uh, been exposed to the idea of it now and are encouraged to try it out. I'd love to hear your thoughts and your process if you're, if you're wanting to embark on this journey or if you've tried to do it yourself. Feel free to drop a comment below and, and let me know. Until next time, peace. Assalamu alaikum.